Hi and welcome to another tutorial on 2D game design in Unity. In this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to scripting in Unity. So starting to write some code to control our game. And so to get started um, what we'll do is we'll create a basic script in the C-sharp programming language that can detect when our um, player object or when the ball has hit another object such as a coin. Okay. Um, when it comes to scripting in Unity and writing with code, um, there are different languages you can use, such as JavaScript and c -sharp, And it doesn't really matter which language you use. Um, it doesn't matter whether you use JavaScript. It doesn't matter whether you use c -sharp. Um, However, in these tutorials, I'll be using c -sharp, So I'll, I'll be writing with c -sharp code. And I recommend using c -sharp code um, just because a lot of the documentation on the Unity website, a lot of the tutorials, and a lot of the resources are um, for C Sharp. There are a lot of resources and tutorials for scripting in JavaScript, but by default, if you go onto the Unity website and look up how to do something or look at a tutorial on how to do something in Unity, most of them are going to be um, um, in, J in C Sharp code. So most of them will be demonstrating C Sharp code. So, that's why I'm going to, um, to show scripting in Unity using c -sharp code instead of JavaScript. c -sharp is pretty easy to learn, and if you know how to do things in JavaScript, then you should be e easily able to do those things in c -sharp as well. A lot of the things are very similar in Unity, um, and the, uh, some of the code is very similar. Okay, so what we'll do first is we'll add an object that we can actually attach a script to. So what I'll do is I'll have a coin down here so that we can collect a coin as the ball passes through. And when we collect the coin, the um, coin will disappear and we might increase the score. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll go into the sprites folder and I have a coin sprite here, which I'll just drag on. And what you'll see is probably actually just disappears. And the reason why that has happened is because I haven't put it on the sorting layer. So I'll go to that coin sprite in the hierarchy and set the sorting layer to foreground. And there we go. We can see the coin now right there. Okay. Now, in order for this ball to interact with this coin down here and collect it, there needs to be some kind of collision detection. So um, we already have on the ball, we already have a rigid body and we also have a circle collider. So from an earlier tutorial, we might remember that in order for two objects to interact with physics in Unity, at least one of them has to have a rigid body and both of them will need to have a collider. So on this coin, we can go and add a collider. So we'll go add component, physics 2D and circle collider. We'll edit the collider and just drag that little green line in so that it's the same size as the actual coin. Okay, so now we have a collider on this coin. But in order to detect collision, we need to check this box here where it says is trigger. So we'll make this trigger. Okay, so now we can run that and nothing will really happen at the moment apart from the ball will just kind of pass through the coin. Okay, so it passes through the coin, but we haven't actually um, said what to do when that ball passes through the coin. So let's go back to assets and we'll go to the scripts folder. If you haven't made a scripts folder, then I suggest doing that. Go into that folder, right click and click on create. And then you'll notice that you can choose C, C sharp script or JavaScript. So we're going to create a C sharp script and I'm just going to call this coin script. Okay. And we'll double click on that script. And what that will do is it will open it in the coding editor, which is mono develop, um, which is included when you install unity for free and it will open the script. So here we go. We've got coin script dot CS, which stands for C sharp. We've got using Unity Engine and using System Collections. And then we have public class coin script, which is the name of the actual script and class, and then mono behavior. 
I'm not going to go into detail too much on things like classes um, for this tutorial. We'll go into detail on that a little bit later um, when we do some more advanced scripting. But if you're interested in knowing more about that now and how C Sharp works, then you can go and have a look at my introduction to C Sharp scripts in the um, Xamarin and C Sharp tutorials. However, what we have here um, inside this coin script class, which is where all of our code is going to go for this script, we have void start and then we have void update. Now these are two methods. We have start method and update method. The start method inside these two little curly brackets, that's where you put all of the code that you want to run when this script um, launches. Okay, so as soon as this script runs, any code inside the start method will run just at the beginning and it will run once. Okay, so anything that you want to initialize at the beginning of the game, you can put there. The update method, any code that's inside the update method will run every single frame during the game. So it will be um, called once per frame, which means it will be repeating constantly throughout the game. So, for example, if you want to move an object to a certain position at the beginning of the game, then you might put some code for that inside the start method. If you want to be able to detect um, when keys are being pressed or maybe move an object backwards and forwards constantly throughout the game, then that should be in the update method because you want that to be occurring throughout the whole game. You want to be detecting key presses all the time to move an object or if you want to just to manually move an object backwards and forwards um, then you might want that happening throughout the whole game that should go in the update method so basically start will any code in there runs at the beginning of the game and anything inside the update method will be called every single frame okay but what we're wanting to do here is we're going to um, call some code we're going to run some code but on a different event only when an object has entered the coins uh, collider. So basically, we're only going to, if we go back to Unity, we're only going to run code that will maybe increase the score or um, display a message or um, make the coin disappear. And that's only going to occur when the ball collides with the coin or um, triggers the coin. So we can create a whole new method for that. We'll use another method which is called on trigger enter 2D. So say void on, it's important that it starts with an uppercase O, on trigger enter 2D. And if you go to the Unity website, there's a lot of information about on trigger enter 2D um, and how it can be used. But we'll say void on trigger enter 2D bracket collider, make sure that's an uppercase C, Collider 2D other. So what this means is we're going to call this method and we're going to run any code inside um, this method when this object collides with an other object. So any other object. So it could be the ball, it could be something else. Okay. And then so we'll add some curly brackets and we'll put our code inside here. All right. So what we'll do firstly is we'll just display a simple message in the console um, to say that um, this has been triggered. So the ball has hit the coin, okay? We can do that by saying debug.log and then inside brackets we can add and inside um, double quotation marks we can say something like triggered and close the brackets and um, in that line with the semicolon. Okay, so if you're not familiar with C sharp code, um, you need to make sure that when you um, do something like a debug.log message, so this is just going to be a message displayed in the console, it's important that you put that in brackets and then put it in quotes. Um, and each separate instruction, each instruction on line will end with a semicolon. Okay, so we close that method. All that's happening at the moment is when an object is detected, um, as in when it hits this coin, it will just display a message saying triggered and it will display that in the console. So if we save this script, um, and I've actually already saved it by pressing Command S, but you can click File, 
save or command S on the Mac. I'm going to go back to Unity and I'm going to um, firstly have to attach this script to the coin. So we can go to this script and we can drag it onto the coin. So we can drag it onto Coin Sprite here. Just click and drag it on. And if we go to Coin Sprite, we can now see that the coin script is attached there. All right, so this script won't actually really do anything with the coin unless it's actually attached to the coin. So it needs to be attached to that object, otherwise nothing will happen. But what we're going to do is display a simple message saying triggered when this ball hits this coin. And in order to see that, we need to go to the console and the console can be used to display different messages um, during testing. So we'll run this game. And what should happen is this ball will roll down and when it hits this coin, it will pass through it and we should see a message down here. So there we go. We see this message here that says triggered. Okay, but all that really happened was the ball just passed through the coin and the coin's still there, but the coin should disappear once it's been collected. So what we can do is go back to our code and we could add something else to it. What we can say is destroy in uppercase T, destroy game object. And when we start typing game object, we'll get a few, a couple of options here. We want to choose this one here, Lock starts with lowercase g. And then we end that line with a semicolon. So what, so what we're saying here is when another object collides with this coin, we want to display a message saying triggered in the console and then we want to destroy the game object that this script is actually attached to, which is the coin. So the coin will be destroyed and will disappear when um, the ball hits it. So we'll save that script, go back to Unity, and we'll run this game again. And so this time, as the ball rolls down and passes and hits the coin, the coin will disappear and we'll also see the message triggered. So there we go, the coin disappears once it hits the, um, once the ball hits it and we see the triggered message there. Okay, um, another thing we could do is also increase the score. Okay, now I won't go into um, how to add a score on the screen yet, but we can just have a simple score displayed in the console for now. And in a later tutorial, we'll look at how to display messages on the screen and work with the UI and all of that. But we'll go back to code. And inside the, this class here, we'll add a new line and we'll create a variable. And this variable will be an integer. So it will just be a whole, it will be able to store whole numbers. Okay. And we could just say something like int for integer, create an integer variable. And we can give it a name. So we could call it score. And we could give it an initial value, let's say equals zero. So we'll give it an initial value of zero and then end that line with a semicolon. Now that will allow us to create a variable that will contain a score and then we can go and update that score when a coin is collected. Okay, but if we make it a public variable, so we say public int score equals zero, what that will actually do is allow us to access that variable and its value inside the unity editor. So if we go to click on the coin and then go to the coin script, we can see now here that we have score zero and we can actually manually change uh, that value here inside unity instead of having to go back and change it in the script. So that's what happens when you create a public variable in a script attached to an object in unity. Okay, so now what we can do is we can increase that score when the coin is uh, collected. So what we can say is something like this. We could say score equals score plus one. And what that will do is increase the score by one. And then we could say debug.log score. And that will display the actual value of the variable score on the screen in the console. So we'll save that, go back and run it. And so this score is initially zero and it will increase by one. So we should see the value of 
one here. Okay, so we see triggered and then we see one, the score. Okay, we can go back and change that script a little bit more. So other ways of writing this, instead of saying score plus one, if we're just increasing the score by one, we can actually say score plus plus. Okay. Um, if we wanted to say maybe increase the score by five points, we could either say score equals score plus five, and that would increase it by five points, or we could say score plus equals five, and it's the same as saying score equals score plus five. So we'll just increase it by five. Okay, and then we can also actually say um, instead of just displaying the value of score we can also display a message. So we could say something like score, uh, whoops, as a string. So inside quotes, we could say score space plus score. And what this will do is it will display the word score, uh, colon space, and then the actual value of score. So we'll go back after saving that script, just clear the console, get rid of those messages, run it again. And now the coin should be destroyed. Um, we see the message triggered and we see score five. Okay, so that's basic introduction to scripting in Unity, writing code with the C-sharp language. Um, so in the next few tutorials, we'll be looking at things like how to um, play a sound when a coin is collected, uh, how to move the ball around using um, uh, buttons on the keyboard and how to display things like the score on the screen, maybe take away health when we hit other objects like a bomb. So we'll be looking at all sorts of things that we can do with um, the C-sharp language and scripting in Unity. That's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.